We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Kate and Abby Show. We're excited to talk about this amazing topic we've got for you today, which is seven writing tools that we utilize every single day. Writing tools that will save your life, or at least save your writing life. Save your writing life. So we're going to go through those things we utilize every day. But first... We have to thank our sponsors, who are you guys. You're the ones who support this show and keep it going, and we so appreciate your support. So thank you guys so much. And if you get value out of these episodes, show us some support. Go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this podcast alive and free of interruptions. So I know we get a lot of questions from you guys asking what are your favorite writing tools? What are the tools that I need in my literary quiver? I was just about to say that too. <laughs> yeah, like if you didn't say that, it's going to be like quiver. Mm, yes, good word. For um, creating an incredible book in the most streamlined and easy, organized way possible. So we're going to be sharing our favorite tools for that. And you guys probably if you know us you know the number one tool that we both utilize every single day i practically live in this software (laughs) (laughs) i practically don't have a home (laughs) my home is scrivener (laughs) i practically live in this software i do it is like it's constantly open on my computers (laughs) multiple computers yes (laughs) and and i'm constantly using it whether for writing projects or for organizing my life, my schedules, my goals, my year. It is such a diverse, versatile software that you can use for almost anything. But we especially love it for writing. And we love it for co-writing because we can share documents, which is really great. Yeah, that's they, been really nice for They can nice sync to a cloud and we can both access our master project or master scrivener project which if you've been following us you know kate and i are working on a series together our first book in this series is pretty close to being finished with the first draft which Mm. is super exciting and we have been working on this in scrivener respectively kate has been writing her chapters in a separate scrivener project but then she loads her chapters into the master scrivener project so that i have access to them and it's just such a streamlined way to work with a co-writer yeah it's so great so do you do a separate scrivener document or no no but i really should because the other day i went to sync across my computers and i didn't realize i had one opened in oh yeah see that's why i do it so there is one thing (laughs) with scrivener and it's not so much a hiccup as it is something to just be aware of is that if you have multiple people using it it might overwrite the the version basically right like yeah if if you you, can explain it better if you open it up on your computer and somebody else has opened up on their computer your version might save over their version so you just have to make sure content gets deleted basically so that's kind of scary so (laughs) i am not quite as tech savvy as abby is so i just have a separate scrivener document that i know okay only i am using this one and so i write my chapter in there and then i put it into our master scrivener document so that way if god forbid something bad happened and it got overwritten i would have a spare yes backup version. so it's it's always great to have backups yeah have backups upon backups upon backups you will never regret having too many backups yes <laughs> have <laughs> and not even just in clouds either it's good yeah. to have a hard drive yes or um a flash stick is that what it's called yeah a f- or a flash drive i guess yes. is the the word i'm looking for have it backed up on something that's a piece of hardware too mm-hmm. because it's good to have it in case something ever happened to the cloud where uh, you know the cloud crashed or something and you don't want that to be your only plan b you also right. want you want a plan a b c d <laughs> yes you you want a few different backups preferably some that are physical copies that you can have somewhere i have a um a g drive it's called it's like 
Uh, it's like the size of a small book. It's like the size. It's a little smaller than a hundred days of sunlight. And I put it has a huge amount of storage on it, and every single piece of writing goes on there, so that way I have a physical backup in case I need to access it. Yeah. Yeah, so bonus tip, bonus tool, actually, that I forgot to write down on our list is physical backups. Yeah, are a good, good thing point. To have. Yes. Also, printing off your manuscript, yeah. if you're at a point where you are going to utilize a printed version, whether editing or revising or just reading through it to go easy on your eyes, it's really nice to read a printed manuscript. And that's also another way to have another backup. Yeah, true. Because worst case, if literally every copy got deleted, you could retype the whole thing, but at least you don't have to come up with it all again. Right. Or you could just scan it all and right, probably have true. a software that could... Yeah, I think... I was going to say, I think there are softwares that exist that yeah. can like recognize letters and words and create them and like transfer right. them into type instead of a like image yeah. i think my phone does that too by the way does it really yeah wow. it's weird it's it, you take a picture it's like copy the text from this image i'm like what wow <laughs> technology these days i feel like an old lady but it's really a good idea to have backups upon backups so that is like a bonus tool that we both use because if you spend a lot of time writing and then something goes wrong and you lose it you're gonna be really sad so don't let that happen and Going back to Scrivener, Scrivener is my favorite software for so many reasons, but the main reason is how you can put all of your thoughts in a very organized way without, with like giving, having the freedom to organize it however you want is the thing that I really like about it. Because I've tried other writing softwares and the thing that I've found I don't like about other softwares is that usually the organization system is sort of set in stone. Yeah. But with Scrivener, it's it's highly customizable. It's like fully customizable. And I love having everything at my fingertips, <laughs> everything yeah. that I need in one place. Also having like the separate chapters and being yeah. able to have notes and other things, other mm -hmm. resources. I don't think things like, I remember when I had Word document, I don't think it had any of that. No. Unless newer versions do. No, Word, I mean, Word is fine for formatting and for printing things. I use Word for formatting. I use Word for printing documents, printing manuscripts, but it's really not a writing software. Right. It's a word processing software, right. <laughs> you know, so it's not conducive to creativity and organizing your notes. I like to think of it as Word documents are like having an, a place where your book is actually stored, but... Scrivener is like a virtual office, mm. you know? Yeah, that's a good way so, to put it. Yeah, Word is like a notebook. <laughs> Scrivener is like a virtual office. And so you have way more resources at your fingertips, which by the way, as we're rambling on about Scrivener, click the link. If you are interested in getting Scrivener, click the link in the description of this video and you can get 15% off Scrivener or 20%. I can't remember what it is. I think it might be 20%. I'm not sure on that anymore. Sorry, my, I'm tired off Scrivener using the code Abby at checkout. A-B-B-I-E. Use that code at the checkout. Use the link below this video and you will get some sort of discount, 15 or 20%. I can't remember anymore. So yeah, throwing that out there. Also, I have a Scrivener masterclass that you guys have probably heard me talk about in the past showing you the basics, but the most important tools that I utilize in Scrivener. Check that out as well. It will be linked below if you want to learn more about Scrivener. Highly recommend that. It's a good class. Good master class. <laughs> Thank you. All the info that, like, I only scratch the surface of how you can use Scrivener. So if you want to be able to use Scrivener in a more advanced way, there are so many tools and resources that you really have to dig deeper into or read lengthy tutorials about how to use, which... I haven't taken the time to do. So I just use like surface level, but Abby in her, her masterclass goes into this deep dive of how to simplify everything, but be able to use these more advanced settings, which is really nice. I actually need to watch it. I really do because I've only seen bits and pieces while you've been making it. But I'm like, I need to actually watch that because I would probably learn probably a hundred things about Scrivener that I don't even know how to do yet. Yeah, yeah, it, it, I've had a lot of good reviews on that masterclass. It has helped a lot of writers. So yeah, definitely check that out. 
Our second tool on this list, I'm trying to pull myself away from talking about Scrivener here. (laughs) Moving on to a tool that Kate utilizes a lot to organize your notes and just your your brain dumps, your random ideas that come to you at at moments where you maybe don't have access to your computer or your Scrivener, and that is Evernote. Yeah, Evernote is a website, basically. It's basically a cloud-based software, I guess. Would you call it a software or is it a website? App. App. Or probably yeah. an app. It'd probably, yeah, it's an app. app. So it's a it's an, a cloud-based app that is essentially a notebook. There's a pro version that you can pay monthly for. I have only ever used the free version and it lets you create separate notes, organize them in a pretty coherent way. And also it has like a scratch pad for quick notes. It has a calendar if you want to get into organizing stuff. I only use it for note taking. But the thing that's nice about it is it will sync it across your devices. So let's say you're working on, I've used it for short stories more than anything. So if I'm working on a short story, a lot of times on road trips, I will turn on my phone and download the Evernote app. And then it will download all of the... um, all the notes that I had on my computer. So every note I put into it on my computer, I'll now be able to access from a phone or an iPad or something small if I'm traveling. And then if I have an idea, I'll be able to just write it out right on my phone without pulling out my laptop and needing internet and stuff like that. So it's it's nice to have access to that. And I've also known other friends of mine who use it um, to actually write their book in. So if they're at work on lunch break, they can pull out their phone easily and start typing right in the Evernote document um, and start writing their book, which Google Docs works very similarly to. Yeah. So if you want... I feel like Evernote probably has better organization tools. Yeah, I think I think Evernote has better organization tools. Yeah. I think for sure. But um, it also loads better. Mm. It's always loaded better. Like Google Docs is such a hefty thing to load on a phone. It like is kind of weird the layout sometimes yeah. depending on your device. Whereas Evernote, they've really taken a lot of pains to make it very minimal and clean and easy to use. Mm. So it's really nice. Depend, it, it kind of works across any device. And you can save your writing to it. So I use it for story ideas. I use it for um, YouTube stuff. I use it for writing down podcast ideas on the go. I use it for everything. Yeah. I I need to use it more honestly because I usually use my um, Note app on my Mac, but that doesn't sync to my phone because my phone's an Android. So it's nice to have that sync across all devices, like you're saying. Uh, One thing that I do use in Evernote that I've talked about in the videos sometimes when I get this question is the calendar feature because I like how you can customize the calendar to be a particular month, whatever month you want it to be, and can copy and paste it somewhere else. So this sounds like really strange roundabout way to do something, but I use it in Scrivener, but I first go to Evernote and I create a document with a calendar of whatever whatever month I want, and then I copy and paste it into a document in Scrivener, and I use that, or you could use it in Evernote as well, but I put it in Scrivener so that it's more convenient with my other notes, and I use that to measure the timeline of a story. Oh, that's cool. I've seen you do that. Okay, I've seen you do that. So I'll write in the little cells, like, what happens on each day, and I find that so helpful for figuring out the timeline of a book right because it can get very confusing very quickly definitely oh my gosh (laughs) as we've both known yeah like wait when did that happen how many days ago like how many days have passed since this happened and if you have it like all written out on a calendar in either Scrivener or Evernote or some other it's so much simpler yeah so much simpler yeah and you can reference even the day of the week which is really helpful sometimes. yeah especially when two people are writing it mm. and then you're like wait how many days went by since that event yes. it can actually be surprisingly hard yeah to figure out sometimes yeah it can so that's something that i utilize all the time another thing that i utilize all the time is personality <laughs> katie you're already grinning personality typing systems I was Enneagram. thinking this is going to turn into an hour-long podcast suddenly. <laughs> I know, I can't because we, we have 15 minutes left. So Enneagram and MBTI. So my favorite websites for that, for the Enneagram, I usually use the Enneagram Institute has great information on the Enneagram. And MBTI, I usually use 16personalities.com is a good 
resource for that. I've talked about the Enneagram before. I have a whole video on it, so I'm not going to rant too much here about the Enneagram, but I love Enneagram probably more than MBTI at this point because I love how the Enneagram dives into what we believe rather than just how we behave. MBTI is more about how we behave, so external behaviors and attitudes or personalities, how they're perceived by others. But Enneagram really helps to develop the internal conflict of your characters, I find. I always recommend this to writers who aren't sure how to develop their character's internal conflict or they're not sure where to start. I always say start with their personality because once you nail down their personality and you realize what their internal conflict is, what's at the heart of their personality, now it's so much easier to stay in character and to not be inconsistent, which is something that I've seen writers fall into is with inconsistencies with a character. There'll be one personality and then a few pages later, they're acting like they have a totally different personality and it's very jarring and confusing, but it's so helpful if you stay within the parameters of a certain personality and it doesn't have to fit the exact type. I'm not saying to do that at all. Your character should be unique and have unique internal conflict, but it's a great starting point. It's a great springboard to creating deeper internal conflict if you can find, narrow down what is their personality. And so MBTI and Enneagram are two great resources for figuring that out. I'm just going to throw that out there and not rant too much about it, but you can check out my Enneagram video for a more in-depth look at all of that. And in that video, I also provide a Enneagram cheat sheet that is basically everything I talk about in the video plus memes and... <laughs> other charts and things that I personally use to figure out my character's types quickly memes? and efficiently. I don't know if they'd be called memes, but you know, like... Like images with words on them. No, I guess it, it's not really considered a meme. It's like Enneagram types in three words and like the oh, list of all kind of, of them. You know I mean? It's funny though, like what's the, <laughs> one of my favorite are... writing tools is memes. <laughs> memes can also be helpful, believe it or not. I <laughs> mean can. like No, you've shown me some pretty funny yeah, memes. It actually that it has memes helped me are accurate. <laughs> some memes have actually helped me to um figure out my character's personality. <laughs> That's a riot. I'll be like, well what does that look like in a real scenario? And then I type in, you know, Enneagram 8 memes and then I see all these <laughs> jokes about Enneagram 8s and I'm like okay I get it I know who that person is right and then it's it just clicks for you in a different way yeah that makes so that sense. can be helpful yeah it is important to nail your character's personality because there's nothing more confusing and frustrating to the viewer or reader than they think they know your character and suddenly the character just completely turns their back on them and acts a completely different way that doesn't make sense and completely betrays who you've been building them up to be. Right. That's frustrating. Yeah. And another great resource for developing conflict in your characters is these books that I have on the table here, which you guys, if you're watching the video, you might have been like, what are those books sitting there under Abby's arm? These are the thesaurus series <laughs> i don't know what the series is actually called but all the books are the something thesaurus writers helping writers is that the name of the series uh, it looks like it i don't know but I, probably writers helping writers by angela ackerman and becca puglisi and there's a whole series of these books on amazon i have had this one which is the emotion thesaurus for a long time i have used this quite a bit and i love these books because they are easy to follow, just wonderfully, beautifully organized indexes, basically, of emotions and conflicts, internal conflicts mostly, that will arise for your characters depending on the situation you're writing. So for the emotion thesaurus, it is a list, uh, an index rather, of a bunch of emotions, both positive and negative, that may come up for your character. <clears throat> and each one is broken down into internal responses, external responses, um, physical signals, so body language, nonverbal cues, things like that. That is really helpful if you are stuck in a scene where you're not sure how to convey the body language or what, this, what these characters are expressing in their emotion. Another one that I picked up that I'm really excited to get into and explore more is the conflict thesaurus, which is 
seems like a really good guide for writing things like short stories or coming up with a story idea in general. So I love that it goes, it starts from a place of conflict between characters. And so it's a huge <laughs> index, pretty thick index of different conflict scenarios that your characters can run into, both internally and externally. Great starting point if you need story ideas. And the last one that I have here is the negative trait thesaurus. This was something that I grabbed because I was looking for negative traits for my characters online and all I was coming up with were basically lists and screenshots from Tumblr posts and things like that of here are negative character traits, but none of them really had any depth or meaning behind them. And what I loved about the layout of this one is it goes into the cause, possible causes of these negative traits, emotions that go with them, thoughts that your character might be having, negative aspects, positive aspects, examples from literature. So a very complete and interesting guide that will help you to spark some ideas. I just want to throw those out there for you guys who maybe you run into a roadblock with coming up with a story idea or with a conflict for your story and you're not sure where to go from there. So these guides are super helpful. I'm really excited to dig deeper into the conflict one, especially because you guys know how much I love internal conflict. I will link the books below if you want to check them out, but I've used the Emotion Thesaurus one and I can definitely recommend that. So the fifth tool that we both have used quite a bit are ambient soundscapes. And this is more of a writing process thing. Yeah. Uh, while we're writing, getting in the zone and trying to immerse ourselves in our fictional worlds. Ambient soundscapes are really good for that. Yeah, for sure. Just, it can really just add that extra layer yeah. of making your story come to life and feel like reality. Yeah. Yeah, it's super helpful. I used a site called Ambient Mixer. I was literally just which, about to say, what was that site you use normally? Ambient Mixer. But I also listen to some on YouTube. Right. Which there are a lot of good ambient mixes on YouTube. Yeah, the, the Ambient Mix thing is neat because it has each stem, basically, that... Um, so let's say it's um, coffee shop ambience. So you've got like people talking in the background, espresso machines going, a thunderstorm in the background, dishes clattering, and some soft guitar music or something. So you have like a bunch of different stems. Yeah. And if you're like, oh, I love everything about this except for the dishes clattering or the people talking, you can actually mute that one individual right. thing. So that was really unique. I hadn't seen that anywhere else. And you can really tailor it to exactly what you want it to be. Right. So that's pretty cool. It, it's a pretty cool resource. And you can use, they have so many different ones. I think users actually upload their own mixes. Yeah. Because I've seen some that are based off of um, existing fiction, mm -hmm. like the drawing room of Downton Abbey, stuff like that. And they'll base it off of existing fiction books and yeah. TV shows and stuff like that. And then you can also make your own, I believe. Yes. So Which is really neat. Cool. There's a lot of options. And if you want music in the background, you can also play music from either playlists or some another mix on YouTube and kind of layer these things together, which was that was actually the sixth item on our list here is playlists. And these two things kind of go together to create that immersive experience, which we've talked about playlists on the podcast before. And yeah, we actually we did a whole episode recently on playlists, which we'll yes. link below the video version of the podcast. So How check that out. Make the ultimate writing playlist. And I also post playlists on my channel. So if you haven't seen those, definitely check those out. I post them according to mood and just story scenarios and different things like that. And yeah, Abby I, is I like make the tons. master of playlists. <laughs> I make making. tons of playlists on Spotify. Yeah, so it's I, fun I'm to... usually listening to Abby's playlist. Like I have a few that are exclusive to my books that I've created. But if I'm like, I just want something that feels like this mood, I always go to Abby's Spotify or her YouTube and just start playing one of her playlists. It's yes, easier than it's so having fun. to make it myself. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. I'm honored. I love making playlists. It's like I can't stop myself from making playlists, but <laughs> it goes well with the ambient soundscapes if you want a super immersive writing experience. Yeah, because you can layer them. That's really yeah. cool. Those are two things that we can't live without. And the seventh and final thing that we can't live without, at least 
I can't live without is Pinterest. <laughs> Using Pinterest to build aesthetic visual storyboards of our books, which I actually made a video kind of recently about that was like silent workflow video of me silently making aesthetic boards yeah it was really <laughs> relaxing for my uh that my was new so story. soothing to watch <laughs> thank you it was super fun to make because it was like totally different than what i usually make but yeah it's something that i do all the time and really helps to inspire me for whatever project i'm writing yeah me too it can really get me it can really get me in the right headspace mm. if i feel a little bit cloudy or like i need to get in the zone i usually put on a playlist that makes me think of my book that helps me to enter into the story I'm telling. And I pull up my vision board because I'm a very visual person. And so seeing imagery will trigger those same emotions and feelings I had for the story and get me back into that same mood to write it. So yeah. I find that's really, really <clears throat> helpful. Yeah, same. That I do the same thing and I find that really inspiring. It, it's a good way to immerse yourself quickly in the writing mood and you can also take your vision board and turn it into a computer background <laughs> or take oh, a few yeah. images that you like build a little collage either in PicMonkey or canva or something like that and make that your scrivener background or your computer background and look at that while you write for some visual inspiration there are so many things that you can do once you build that visual yeah board and we're, it's another thing we're also using for our co-write project is yes. where we have collaborative pinterest board it's such a huge board it's at this a point huge board. it has like 12 sections yeah, or something plus like, like 500 all the pins on the main yeah. section <laughs> yeah it has a lot because we yeah. had that one going for years yeah this has and been then we a did long the, time coming it has been a long time coming it's exciting yeah it is and so it's it's neat because we can like add stuff to that and then it helps us to get an idea of like okay this is how abby sees that character right and it helps me to capture that same vibe that she sees rather than it just both being respectively in our own heads we can create that and then we both understand the vibe that we want for that character the, the aesthetics and everything yeah. it can also help um cover design i think oh yeah like for when sure. you get to that stage even Good if you're point. hiring a cover designer to do it for you, to be able to send them the aesthetic board and be like, here's some inspiration of, you know, what my story looks like to me in my head. Right. And that will help to give an artist good visual inspiration, something to go off of. Right. Rather than trying to put into words what you see. Right, exactly. It's <laughs> always helpful. Yeah. Um, another thing that I find it good for is uh, promoting your book when you get to the point of promotion because yeah. if your readers can see a visual inspiration board that reflects what your story feels like and looks like that is going to get them all the more excited to read it right yeah so, you like you have pinterest boards for 100 days right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah for 100 days and the new one yeah and i have them for my or? books too that yeah it is a great way to engage with like your readers because it's yeah. like it's like bonus content exactly the bonus content section of the dvd do any of you guys remember that <laughs> bonus content <laughs> that that's what the pinterest board is mm -hmm. it is <laughs> great bonus content so those are our seven writing tools that we we use all the time scrivener evernote enneagram and mbti these amazing writing thesaurus books ambient soundscapes playlists and pinterest boards couldn't live without them Tell us in the comments below, what are your favorite writing tools? What do you love using to make your writing process better and faster and more efficient? We'd love to hear about it. Give this video a thumbs up if you're on YouTube. If you're not, go check it out on Kate's channel, youtube.com slash K-A-M-N-S. And give us a nice rating on the other podcast platforms. Thank you again to our amazing sponsors who make this show possible. We love you guys so much, and we will see you in the next one. Stay stoked and rock on.